Looking good, boys. Welcome back to a, another quick tutorial. Today, I'm going to focus on something other than the AI in Half-Life Alex. I'm gonna look at what you have to do to reuse some of the existing released Half-Life Alex maps. I've been talking about building a friendly combine squad and taking them through our map, but instead of building a whole entire map from scratch, because there are already some very beautiful maps out there which take a lot of time to build, I'm going to start with trying it out in an existing released map and I'm going to show you how you can take a released existing map, so a map from the actual Half-Life Alex game, load it up into the editor, make a few modifications and then start spawning your entities into that map and reusing it instead of building your own. If you're finding this content helpful, you can support me by liking, subscribing, or commenting below. Feel free to ask questions, start discussions, whatever you like. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. For this tutorial, I'm going to open up Half-Life Alex, launch the tools, and create a new add-on. I'm going to be copying a bunch of the existing maps into a new add-on directory, so I'm going to call it Combine Squad. You can see the directory appear in the add-ons folder and it's currently empty. I also have this other window open which is pointing to the actual release maps of Half-Life Alex. These are read only so you can't modify them in place which is a good thing, but you can copy the whole directory structure and bring it over to your new add-on and that's going to give you access to all those maps in a writable format so you can make modifications to them. You can see every level has a folder and a map and within each folder, there's a series of sub-maps that make up the main map. So a map can consist of a bunch of prefabs, which are other prefabricated maps, and you can see them all here. Once those maps are in that new add-on directory, I can go ahead and navigate there. So I wanna make sure I'm in the right spot. I wanna open up the maps from that new directory. If you go to the release folder, I'm gonna grab one of the intro maps. If you've played through Half-Life Alex, this is the map where you get your Russells, the hideout part of the map. Now you can see the maps are really complicated. Once you zoom out, there are a lot of entities here, a lot of things going on. And if you start randomly deleting and experimenting, you can quickly break the map. And I've done that a few times. But the nice thing is that while you're experimenting, you're learning a ton about how these things are all hooked together. So most of what I've learned about modifying Half-Life Alex maps, I've done just by getting in there and messing around. And you can really learn a lot about how these things are built. So let's start by just building the map and launching it. This particular map, you start you inside of a van and are being transported. Now that's not the ideal location to spawn if you want to do some customizing of the map because this is a preset cinematic scene. So what I'm going to do is make a copy of this map in case I want to go back to the original. I'm going to call it Combine Squad. So A1 Intro World 2 Combine Squad. And now I'm going to go find that van scene, that cinematic scene. And I'm just going to delete it out of the map altogether. I can't really use that scene for much. By just getting rid of it, I don't have to worry about starting that location. The next thing I want to do is find all the spawn points in the map and you can use an entity report to search for the player info start entities. These entities You've probably seen them before. It's where your player is gonna start in the map and you can have more than one and actually set which one is the master. So which one's going to spawn your player. But you can also have options or logic that makes you spawn different points. If you double click on the item from the entity report, you end up right where that player spawn is. And here you can see it's in this kind of blank box. And that's because when you start the level, it asks you to press the trigger, you press the trigger, and it transports you to the van scene. Now, that, that's not where I want to be. Notice in the spawn flags, that check mark there, 
that tells you that that is the place that you're going to spawn to by default if there's multiple player info starts in the map. So I'm going to uncheck that to make sure that's not where I go by default. And now I'm going to search the map for another place that I could spawn at. So let's check this secondary spawn here. And this is actually in the room where you get the Russells, the Russell gloves. And there's a lot going on here. You can see all these little cinematic scenes. You can see all the logic. I mean, this would take a while to pick apart. Um, it's also not an ideal spot to spawn because there's not a lot of room. So I'm gonna keep on looking around for a better place to put the player start. Here's this road, which looks pretty promising. It's a big open road. I'd like to see if I can spawn the player here and what's gonna happen when I do that. So I'm gonna to go to the entities. We're gonna grab a player info start and drop them into the scene. Now notice I'm gonna set this as the master spawn point and that guarantees that when I build the map and I run it, I'm gonna spawn at this location, not any other location. And here I'm gonna add some equipment. Doesn't really matter what you add here. I just like to get into the habit of adding equipment whenever I spawn a player. So I'm just gonna check a whole bunch of these boxes. And now let's uh, build and run the map and see what happens. Now ignore the lighting. When I'm playing around with this, I don't typically bake the lighting because it takes a while to bake. So I've just been going and running the map and then the lighting looks all messed up. But the general structure of the environment is there. However, if you walk too far, you die. And that's because there's this trigger box that actually kills the player, it does damage when they walk on it. And this is here to prevent the player from, I guess, walking outside of where they should be on the map. It was a bit strange at first, I, I didn't know what was going on, but yeah, you walk into that area and you just start dying. So let's try and find a different area with a little more space to move around in. So I found this section here, which is a, another long road. I can add in a player spawn. I'm gonna add in some combine soldiers and an AI relationship so they don't shoot me right away. And I'm also gonna add an AI goal follow like I did in a previous video to get those combine soldiers to follow me around. And then we can spawn here and see what happens. You can either slow this video down to see exactly what I'm doing or you can go to some of the previous videos to see how to set up the AI relationship, the AI goal follow and spawn in combine soldiers. One thing I did find just by messing around here is that you can change the color of the grunts, which is handy if you wanna be able to identify who's on your side and who's not. Uh, before I was just spawning in officers as being the friendlies and then everything else as not being friendlies, but I can actually set them to red, which is kind of handy so you can quickly identify them. Spawned into the scene, it doesn't look like things are quite working right. I mean, you can see right off the edge of the road into pretty much nothingness, right? The skybox itself. We've got the lighting, which isn't quite working. I'm trying to get these guys to follow me and they're sort of clipping through the road a little bit. So this probably is still not the ideal spot to spawn. But again, it demonstrates that you can spawn into these weird parts of the map and explore them. I imagine this is an area maybe you see from a window somewhere. I'm not sure why it's not complete or why it's in this sort of state, but it is kind of fun to just sort of spawn in the middle of a weird part of a map and see what it looks like. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna find another better spot to spawn. There is a park in this level which you can spawn in. And I'm also gonna go through the trouble of baking the lighting. So here you're gonna see what you can do once you've baked light and once you've found a good spawn point in a map. So it takes a little bit of trial and error, but here I found a really nice spawn point. Once I was sure it was a good place to spawn, I baked the lighting, I add the combine soldier. I've also got a, an armored head crab. I don't know why he jumped around like that. Something's happened recently where I can't get him to just settle down and walk. But this looks good now. 
through trial and error, you can find these areas and maps where you can start spawning things and go from there and use the pre-existing maps instead of building your own. Now that I've verified that I can use these maps and I can spawn things, the next thing we're gonna do is find just the right map to set up a combine versus combine battle. I'm not sure which map to use yet. I found this particular map doesn't have a lot of big open spaces to use. So I may use a map from one of the later levels. So there you have it. Let me know what you think. Let me know if this is helpful. I'm sure this can save you a lot of time if you don't want to build your own map. You can just customize one of the existing maps and use that for whatever mod you want to create.